Hey, welcome back to Happy Little No Trees. I know it's been a minute, but today we're going to talk about OpenDRT. Now, if you've been around in the colorist world on YouTube looking at tutorials and things like that, you've probably come across it more recently than not, as several big name YouTube people have been talking about it, such as Cullen Kelly um, <clears throat> and a variety of other people in the last like week or so saying, OpenDRT, so amazing. So, uh, what we have right here loaded up on our screen is OpenDRT, the 1.0 version, and you can get that as a DCTL. There's links in the description, don't worry. Um, <clears throat> but I like OpenDRT as a DCTL. It's completely functional, perfectly fine. It does everything. There is a magical, uh, and I've talked about it before, uh, if you watch Colin's video, he pretty much just goes through the basic version. Uh, it has some settings for you to work with, but there is a, <clears throat> a secret version that gets into um, what you could say is uh, the stick shift version, where you have a lot more control and say over how things work. And so if you load up the stick shift version, there are a ton of parameters. Now, here in all these parameters, Everything that is going on is in the basic version. Just now, they're opened up and you can control them. And yeah, it's nice like this. Uh, you get a lot more control. You can control the contrast. Uh, you can control you know, the, the high range of the contrast, the low and how the toe kind of functions. You have the full control over what's going on in the OpenDRT plugin versus the regular version, which is just uh, these guys right here, which is just, if you're looking at it, uh, it's more focused on just the main tools that you need plus some presets, like you can switch to Colorful or Umbra. Now, I don't have it plugged in, but and the reason for that is because I like the stick shift version. I also like the basic version. I don't like two different ones. And some people said I was crazy, but I casually took OpenDRT, because it's an open source code base, and I ported it over to OFX. So if we set this back to basic, and we set this node back to basic, and just reset it all, I made an OpenDRT port. And you can see if we just flip between these two and just change and toggle out which one's going in, they are exactly the same. There is no difference between the DCTL version and the OpenDRT OFX version outside of some key factors. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video a little bit about why I chose to make an OFX version of OpenDRT. The fact that I managed to do it, I'm quite impressed with myself. I did it, you could say, just for myself. This only works on Apple computers on metal because that's all I really know how to make OFX for. Uh, so. I wanted access to both the basic presets uh, to keep it simple version, as well as the stick shift mode. I wanted a cleaner, more user-friendly user interface, and that's all things that you can't do in a DCTL, but you can do in a DRT, or yeah, in an OFX version. You can have a lot more organized in terms of controls, you can do a lot more interesting things. In addition to that, it's kind of opened up, and I had to learn Jed Smith's code, who wrote OpenDRT, in and out, like, to transpose it from a DCTL to an OFX. And I know how his math functions have gone through it, which then made me question, what if we tweak a couple things? So, at, in its base settings, there is no difference between what the core functionality of the open the OpenDRT DCTL does and the OpenDRT OFX does. Uh, they have the same presets. Uh, if you're just if you're looking for basic mode, and they function exactly the same. So if we switch this to Umbra, you should see with no other change, there should be no change to the image. They are exactly the same. That's great. So looking at the OFX, why is it better besides fancy UI? Uh, I mean. Yeah, that for me, that's it. Fancy UI. That's all that I'm going for. Uh, but it's blended both 
the presets with the ability to have stick shift mode, which is instead of having two different D or DCTLs and one of them you having to code to get access to the stick shift mode, it's baked in. Uh, <clears throat> and so, and the cool thing is, the when you enable say contrast or or the high contrast, so these tone scale basic contrast, these are all these ones are accessible. Uh, basic contrast, I don't think was accessible, and only part of Creative Write was accessible in in the basic version. You have access to these modules straight out of the gate. The cool thing is these settings change when you change. Uh, this is something that happens in a DCTL in an OFX. It doesn't happen in a DCTL. They are live changing settings. So as you change presets, those settings down below change as well. You can see the contrast. If you look down there in contrast, it, it's going to move when I change these presets. So as you open up all of stick shift mode and start going crazy on it, we got some questions. Like if you make a change to the high contrast, when you make a change here, you're making a change to these values. Because uh, those are all presets, parameters in the entire package core functionality. The cool thing is I can say make these persistent so that if I make a tweak to what the high contrast is doing and set it to where I want it, and then I go back and want to change my tone scale preset, those settings down there are locked in. They're not going to update anymore. They are persistent. Uh, so I can go back and I can kind of start, I can actually go through and say, I want some of Umbra, I want some high contrast, I want low contrast. I can go through the presets and kind of mix and match all the settings that I want and just lock out my persistent values. Uh, and that's for all these stick shift modules. So I can say, these are mine and I'm controlling them relative to the preset values. That's not something that exists in the DCTL version. Um, of OpenDRT. So you have so much more range and so much more con minute control over how it's functioning. The other thing is, uh, outside of having access to all the different stick shift modes, so you just go up to stick shift mode and you just turn whatever ones you want on. If they are not on up here, they are not acting in your thing. And it cleans up the UI. So as you click on these, the UI adds those features in and activates them and if you turn them off, they turn off in the core functionality as well, and they just go back to whatever the preset values were, um, <clears throat> and, and it chooses whatever the preset values are up there. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing is we've added in, I've added in diagnostics. So another thing that I would do often is it's nice to see what the, the curve is on, on the image. So if we're just walking and, and working around uh, making changes to, say, the contrast, you can see we're making that contrast curve steeper or more shallow, and we're just making those tweaks and adjustments, and we're changing how the shape of that contrast curve functions. And it even does things like if you hop down to Umbra, it splits it into three different, your three different uh, curves. Uh, as they go up over the tone scale. Umbra does it really well. I'm, I think, and Umbra is the one that does a lot more with Creative White, so as you change these settings around, that's how you're going to get different flickety flicks of how that's splitting in the high end to give you that high end Creative White point, and that is then all dialable and tweakable and changeable with what's going on here, and making those things be what they want to be. Um, so you can build ent your entire output transform look completely from scratch and control so many different points and so many parameters. So we're just going to reset that back out and we're back to the basic mode and we'll close down tone scale and basic contrast and everything is back to basic. The other thing is a grayscale ramp so that as you're making changes and tweaking and making your look you get to see a grayscale ramp if you want, tone scale curve. The other diagnostics I threw in was, here's just an RBG chips pattern. So you can quickly see as you pick different things, how it's affecting your main six hues. And you can see clearly on your vector scope, uh, so if we turn 
tone scale curve off and grayscale curve. You can see how the different looks uh, function in your cube and everything so that as you're making changes to your to what's going on, you can see the changes happening live in your scopes to each of the hues. You kind of get a cubish breakdown that you can just see how different things are when you make changes. It's a lot clearer because sometimes some images don't work out like that and you don't get to see what's going on. But here, you get to see everything. Uh, so a better version of that, in, 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 if you were just using the DC tail version, you would put an RBG chips pattern probably from Thatcher Freeman. There's links in the description before the node and feed it into the node. But I was just like, why not just, if I'm doing diagnostics, turn it on right there, ready to go. And it is reading the entire pipeline of whatever this DRT is doing. Uh, there is now also, uh, so this core, everything up here above, learn how to use OpenDT here, has the blessing of Jed Smith, the writer of it. I worked with him, I sent him betas of it, and got feedback, and talked with him a little bit here and there to troubleshoot issues on how do I read your code and make it work. The core functionality, amazing, wonderful, and people should use it because you do not want chalky highlights. Uh, I've started adding in things that I'm like, well, what if in the process chain we think about maybe making a change and making doing some different things and adding some other things? So you have in stick shift mode, you have uh, enable hue contrast, which is kind of like it functions uh, per se. Oops, let's enable hue contrast, turn that back on. Um, we're back here. It functions in a in a way that kind of just works if we turn on our diagnostic RGB chips, tone scale curve. You can kind of see it's just tweaking things in in a broadly expansive way, mostly on the red. It's just affecting really the red side of things. I was like, well, I looked at the math and I have a different plugin that I use called that I made called the contrast hue set thing and I was like why don't we bring some of that over and in that same place let's make it a true per channel adjustment and now this is a beta feature so your your run your the uh, its ability to work is kind of tantamount to but you get a per channel adjustment to your each contrast of each channel. So as you make tweaks, you can pinch things down, expand the contrast out. You have a lot of control over that in terms of shaping. And I'm still working on it. That's why it's beta. So it's figuring, right now it's figuring out what works best to make, make the look that I'm wanting. And you know, that always depends with what is the original look? Is it what I want? And, and figuring that out, you know, you can really with yellow and blue kind of dial in for this, it's really going to change how the yellow saturates uh, as you expand that contrast out. But it's all done, how this is functioning is all done in the pipeline of keeping a very control effect on your image to prevent breakage. The other one is some filmic things that I was playing around with. Don't worry about that. These, some of these, if you download the version right now, it doesn't work. There is a link in the description to both um, uh, the GitHub that has the bundle, the DCTL, uh, so you can get the DCTL and, and the GitHub uh, from GitHub, one from Jedi, Jed Smith, the other one is the OFX. It only works on Apple Metal. I apologize, I'm not that smart. Uh, but then there is uh, a website that you can go to that I'm kind of compiling information about what OpenDRT does. And so you can click, if you download the OFX, you can uh, click this link and it goes right to a website that kind of breaks it down. But it also has a way in which you can support, uh, you know, uh, Jed wanted this to be open source free. Make sure that everyone who is working on images has the best ability to make the best image possible of the highest caliber with no chalky highlights. But 
for me to keep extending and working on this in a way in which it's out in the world. Uh, outside of it, me doing it for myself, I'm never going to work on it for a Windows machine unless I ever switch back to Windows. Uh, and so, like, if I was getting... There's a donation thing. And then if there's time and there's donations and there's way I can stop doing other work to work on the code base of this, then I get to add new things, I get to extend it and keep working on it. But at a baseline, it is, the core of it is completely free and it will always be free uh, as long as I can deal with that. And, and there'll be versions of version history so you can get whatever version you need up on GitHub. Um, it's all there, fancy dancy, but now you have the opportunity if you're on Apple to have this. It will jump you through the hoops of being a known developer and all that to tell the security warnings to get out. But on the channel you're probably going to see a couple videos uh, kind of walking through what is actually going on with the tone scale adjustments, what is going on in these individual stick shift mo modes, uh, why, why do we want to change uh, our, our purity compress, and what, what is purity compress? Uh, when we're making uh, tweaks and changes to it. So, <clears throat> you know, that's just how you shape the image. And this is how we get out to our display. So, tons of information in the description. Check that out. And probably check out the next video in this series on OpenDRT coming up next.